These thoughts up in my head. Things I never did. I took some meals, but I'm still here. I got these thoughts up in my head. I toss and turn about some things I never said. I got regrets about some things I never did. I took some risks and took some L's, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And I know. And I know. And I know. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Overthinking Thoughts Pod. I'm your host, Ed, and as always, journey with me as we pursue greatness in a world full of chaos. Back at it again with another episode. What is this? 52? 3? 2? One of them. We above 50, so that's good. Um, but once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for rocking with me for another week. I hope that your week's been going well. I hope that you are accomplishing everything that you set out to do. If not, what you're waiting on, we still got we still got time. Still 2023. There's still opportunity out there. So I pray and hope that you go after it and go get it. Um, other than that, I, I just hope the week's going well for you, man. I, I hope that. As you are navigating through life, you are finding positives in your life, that you're finding things that help you, that motivate you, that encourage you. And I hope that this podcast can be one of those things that helps you. Also, just find an inspiration through life. Like, you're here for a reason. Your presence is a gift to the world. So I pray that you use that well. Um, Let's see. Other announcements. Other announcements. Um, I think we hit 200 on TikTok which is awesome. So shout out to everybody that follows me over there. Uh, Instagram, I think is somewhere in the hundred and fifties or something like that. YouTube is, is, well, it's YouTube. Um, I need more subscribers. If you guys got ideas on how I can put, put the visuals out there more, definitely let me know. But, uh, other than that, just grateful for the support that I've been receiving. Thank you so much for all the things that you have commented. I got an amazing voice message from um, one of my followers, somebody who I know is trying to start his own thing. And it was great. Like he said, he was praying for me, encouraging me, and he wanted to like just encourage me to keep going. I thought that that was amazing. Uh, so shout out to you. His name was Cam. So shout out to Cam. Um my cousin, Paul Unbreakable, Mr. Unbreakable, as he calls himself, has dropped two albums on Spotify. It's the King's Omen 2 and the King's Omen 3. He's going to take some time to spend time with his family more and get some get his things done. But he's put out a lot of music. So if you're on Spotify, type in the King's Omen 2 and the King's Omen 3. And while you're at it, you might as well listen to the original King's Omen. My favorite joint on that is The Gallery. It's the last song on the King's Omen. It is fire. Um, but he's put out some music for sure. So shout out to him for doing well. So people around us are, are, are doing good. That's an amazing thing. So as always, if you want to support, you can find me on our streaming platforms. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well with the visuals. And then for social medias, you can find me over on Instagram at Overthinking Thoughts Pod. You can also find me on TikTok at Overthinking Thoughts Pod. Just trying to keep it simple. And as always, thank you for your support. So, question. What happens when you get angry? What happens when certain things fall out of place and you become disappointed in the direction in which your life is headed or you're disappointed in the roadblock that's in the way or disappointed in what you thought was going to happen ended up being something completely different and what you planned for didn't quite work out now you're angry so what happens when anger strikes what happens when your cool is and your patience your patience is being tested i think a lot of times when people get angry um we resort back to the thing that brought us comfort or the thing that makes us feel like everything doesn't exist that can be a slippery slope for some people depending on what you used to turn to people have different vices and different things that come out so you know you get people who turn to drugs alcohol different types of vices and things you get some people that become emotional and shut down you get people who become isolated and they don't talk to anybody um Anger, although it is an emotion that does happen, you have to be very careful with how you progress once that strikes. And that's not an easy thing to do. I think one of the best ways to help me calm down 
well, kind of helped me stay patient was coaching. Because I'll be honest with you, when you're coaching teenage kids that are trying to figure life out, that are trying to figure out, like, where their place is, where they belong, and they just they just want to do well, they just don't know how to go about it, and you're trying to show them one thing and they do another, that part becomes very frustrating. But in the same breath, in your anger comes a moment of realization and patience. And I know that's that's hard to deal with when you're in the midst of it. It's hard to look at it when you're going through it, but it is something that you have to practice. So when you do become angry, the first thing I think you should do is practice patience. Um, one of One of the best people that taught me that Actually, there were two people, um, which is crazy that neither one of them are no longer with us. But the first person that, that kind of taught me that through college, or college through coaching was um, my boy Reno. Three's up from Reno, of course. And he <laughs> – Reno was the dude who, like, can push buttons, but I knew he wanted to be great in his own, like in his own regard. Like he was battling his own things. He was trying to be seen at the time. He was like the shortest kid on the team. And then, you know, as the years went on, he sprouted to be one of the taller kids. Like he hit this growth spurt. And then I think he got more comfortable with who he was, but there were times where he would just like, I get so frustrated because certain shots he would take wouldn't make sense. Certain decisions he would make wouldn't make sense. And I'd have to like step back and be like, bro, like what, what are you doing but he helped me kind of see things because in in the midst of the frustration i could see that it wasn't like he was trying to be disappointing right he was actually trying to do his best and a lot of the times the frustration came in the shots and it wasn't necessarily like him missing it was just the shot selection and so i used to have to pull him to the side and say hey man like what what's going on what you thinking when this stuff happened i don't know man you know like getting frustrated and i would tell him you got to shoot with confidence and so when he knew i was getting ready to be angry i would remind him i'd go what i tell you shoot with confidence coach like all right and so you know he he went on to win a state championship you know and unfortunately although his life is cut short like that's something that will stay with me it's an amazing thing to know like I could have stayed angry. I could have harped on on him. Would he have quit? Would he have walked away? I don't know. Maybe. But the fact that he knew somebody was there and like and was still going to push him, I'd like to think that that helped him get to the next level. The same goes with uh, E-Man, who unfortunately was taken away from us for gun violence. He was 19. Did an episode called The Vent where I talk about that more in depth. But he was one that really helped me kind of result into looking at things different because i remember one time he was another one that just wanted to do his best and wanted to he was such a team player in the sense that he felt he would let the team down if he didn't do his part and i remember there was a particular time in practice where and I, I can't remember exactly what happened but i can see it like he had did something i'm like come on man like you got to be better than that like i'm visibly frustrated and I just watch him, I watch him put his head down. And I was like, oh man, wait, let me, let me like tackle this differently. I pulled him to the side and I was like, hey man, you don't do well when people yell, do you? And he's like, nah. And I said, well, what, what's going to help you? And he's like, well, like, I know I messed up. If you could just help me correct the mistake and just be patient with me, I could do it. And I was just like, okay, cool. And that was the approach we took. Like, there were moments where he could be like, I know you're going to be mad, coach. I know, I know. But, like, I got it. And I could trust him on that. And I think all of that kind of, you know, sets the – for me, helps set the tone. Now, me and my son, you know, we we still got some stuff to work on. But there are moments where I can step back and remember those things. And I, and I feel like if it weren't for them, like, it wouldn't – I don't think it would have helped, you know what I mean? But they were great influences in my life, not only from, you know, being a coach, but just how I built myself as a man, as a father, as somebody who can try to keep his cool when things get crazy. And I think for us, like, as you're going through life, one thing you have to understand is you're going to be dealt some disappointments. You're going to be dealt some bad hands. And there's going to be times where it seems like the only emotion that you'll ever have is anger. 
But the question you have to ask yourself is, how do I handle that emotion in a positive way that I don't do anything to jeopardize who I am, jeopardize my character, or jeopardize my progress? That is a hard thing to deal with when you're in the middle of it. But you also have to know that that emotion will last for a small amount of time because in the midst of anger, you can step back and still find the one thing that just might be good and might be beneficial to your progress moving forward. So as you are going through life, keeping your cool is one of the best things that you can do. Like I relate everything to basketball because when you're on the court, people talking, people trying to get in your head, people trying to control you. And what happens is if you get angry to the point where you lose your cool, you are now controlled because you are basically allowing the emotion to run your decision making. And anger and emotions don't always mix well in the sense of like, if you get so angry that you are making decisions off of your emotional feeling, your emotional state of being, you may just do something that could result in bad progress for you or something that you truly regret. And unfortunately, you know, you've been fortunate enough to live this life. You know that not everything is going to work out in your favor. You get angry about it, but then, you know, I, like I tell my son, like, you can be angry, but what what's next? And don't give me excuses to why you are like, give me solutions as to how you're going to solve what happens next. Keep your cool, man. Like it's, it's so vital to your growth. It's so vital to how you lead. It's so vital in how you progress through life. People want to see you angry, especially if you're a person that has gifts inside of them to where you can build, to where you can grow, to where you can lead, to where you can encourage, because misery loves company and the more miserable you are the more angry you get the more that they win it's a devil's tactic to try to keep you grounded when you were meant to rise above those things so anger is one of those things that once again an emotion that we do face and we do experience but one that you have to try to control in order to really keep your calm and keep your patience and remain present in the current situation. There's many a times where you can watch people get so angry that they lose lose sight of where they're supposed to be. And sometimes anger can stun a person's growth. Sometimes anger can put a person in a bad situation. And sometimes anger can make a person feel like they're less than to the point where it becomes their full identity. You don't want to be angry your whole life. It's a weird place to be. You mad at everything that happened. You mad at every every situation of growth, every situation of, of peace, every situation of where people around you are doing well. And I know it's hard to celebrate when you're angry, but you also have to know that if you're able to remove yourself from that and still celebrate the people around you's success, your day will come. It's going to be a moment where you will grow. And then if they're angry, you're going to be able to be calm enough to help them through their issues and their problems. And like, that's just something that as, as a person who overthinks and is very, uh, I don't know, very anxious at times, that only triggers it even more. It puts me in a worse situation than where I was before. And I don't want to do that. I want to be calm. So I try to live my life as calm as possible, but sometimes sometimes they don't work out man like i've i've had times where like i'm in a frustrating situation now man cars have never really been my favorite i was thinking about this today like the very first car i ever bought when i was younger I spent like 500 dollars on it and it was cool up until i realized that the brakes were faulty the gas leaked and the tires weren't that great and i'm and like you know in the winter time i'm out here swerving everywhere like, it's looking bad it was mine and I wanted, and then it, well, when the timing belt broke and everything overheated, well, it was about time to let that one go. So I walked for a while. <laughs> like I did. Um, it, it took a long time to get back to that. Just financial situations wasn't great. Um, and then I had a, 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 a shared car, I guess you could, could say. And that was cool up until that car got wrecked. So that wasn't good. <laughs> And then I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I don't even want to be a part of it anymore. Plus, like, we went separate ways. So it was like, you're going to need this more than I do. I'll be cool. I didn't live too far from work. And that was one thing my grandma taught me. Like, she taught me, like, hey, if you got to get somewhere, you'll just find a way to make it happen. So I was close enough to walk. That's what I did. 
I just walked until I got basically got a card and I was able to get one. Um, and that was cool for a while, but then I was going to see my, my boy IV. We was going out in Atlanta and we, I was driving to, um, I was on my way to get to him for us to then go to Atlanta and then got caught in a real bad accident. Well, not, it wasn't real bad. It was just traffic and the car in front of me looked like it was stopped. So I kept going and I realized, oh, you're not moving. And by the time I realized it was too late, so now I had to go get a North car, which I bought on my own. And that was like the first time I really like purchased something great. And I felt really good about it. And I had it for a while, but man, had a lot of problems. <laughs> um, Just a lot of mechanical issues with it but it was cool and then i thought i was doing the right thing i got my family car so you know i'm transporting my kids back and forth and now kind of find out this car is bad because they put in a faulty engine and so here we are and i could choose to let that control me i ain't gonna lie like i've i've been thinking about it for a while because i'm just like man i just want to get up and go I don't, I don't like just I mean, I like my my time, but I don't like being grounded all the time either. I'd be ready to like, I'd be ready to leave, but can't do that. <laughs> At least not right now. But that's not to say that, you know, something better isn't along the way. And that's what's helping me stay calm. Like, I could be very angry about this thing. I could be very mad about what I'm doing. And I want to be, but I also know, like, there's got to be something better that comes along. Like God knows I want to protect my family when I drive. God knows that I want to be in a safe vehicle. I got a, I got a real young son and I got an older son, but I got to make sure that they both grow to see their full potential. And I don't want it to be held back in a car that don't work. So God knew what it was when I went to buy it. He knew my situation and I have to trust that he knows my future situation and that he's going to work it all out. So the process is rough, but I got to trust the end result because the end result is going to be something that he wants for me anyway. And so what he wants for me is going to be greater than what I think of for myself, because my my understanding is not. It's not fathomable or it's not even close to what God can do. So Proverbs three, five and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So I'm praying that he directs my path to a car that's not only going to be safe, but affordable. That's going to help. That's going to get me out of this burden. But it's also going to be something that benefits myself, my family, and those that are on the road. Because I don't want to cause accidents to y'all either. Now, say all that to say this. Uh, not going to sit up here and act like I wasn't mad. And did I say a few choice words when things happen? Can't repeat those. Maybe. I'm a work in progress. But also I have to remember that anger can disrupt your peace. And when anger disrupts your peace, it disrupts your progress. When it disrupts your progress, it then eliminates your patience. And when it eliminates that, it will definitely turn into a chain of events that will not only stunt your growth, but probably stop your growth for a very long time. And as a person who wants to progress and do well for his family, I realize that I have to control my anger and I have to control how I react and take the time to remove myself from that situation. Because even in the midst of anger, you have time to step back and look at what the root is how to break that down to its actual root cause and deal with that issue rather than deal with the aftermath and emotion that comes with it. It takes time. It takes practice, but it is definitely worth it in the long run. And I hope that you get to that. I never want you to get to the point where you're so angry that you're willing to, to risk it all, that you're willing to just let it all go over emotion. I've seen it happen to people on a basketball court. I've seen it to happen to people in jobs. I've seen it happen in life. It's not something that works because then you got to fight even harder to get back to that point because people then look at that and go, well, you, you always, like, you the hothead. You the angry person. You the, you the frustrated person. You the one that, that allow certain situations to, to rattle you. And it is hard sometimes. I'm not, I'm not shying away from that at all. I know it can be difficult. I know it can be tough. But I also know that there are better days ahead when we take the time to, one, we can recognize the emotion, but two, recognize that that's not the end result. It is, an, it is a reaction of something that happened, but it does not have to be your permanent resting place. It could be a piece of, of a learning experience. It could be something that helps you shape your character. It could be something that once you develop your character, you know how to overcome it. And then you learn how to rise above the occasion. I know it's easier said than done. 
But as a person who has dealt with anxiety, who overthinks a lot, that's one less thing I want to have when I'm going through it. I do get angry, though. Like, I know that. My son will tell you I get angry. He's, like, first person that sees it. And I think a lot of times, for me, it's because I can see where he's headed, and I'm trying to, like, jump in front of that, like, try to hold him accountable to chores. But I get it. Who wants to Who wants to do that? Most of the time, you just want to come home and chill. I got that. But I also want him to grow up and be a man that doesn't have to rely on others when there are things that he can do and do them well i i don't want him to get to the point where he's always looking around and wondering well who's going to help me do this and do that sometimes you got to get up and do it on your own and i want to be able to instill that in him so he can be a leader and lead others and he doesn't recognize it now but he is an actual leader he just he doesn't realize that he possesses it and i know that i can't rush him to that process because remember when you rush the process you disrupt the journey so i can't disrupt this journey but i can walk with them and i have to remember to make sure that i do that as for you what do you do to calm your anger down what are some of the things that help you keep your cool in the midst of everything i know some people pray they get mad they'd be like lord control my spirit cuz anger is nothing but a devil like it well all right the actual piece of being ang- angry is an emotion but what grows out of that anger and how you move forward could can be controlled one or two ways. You could give it to God and say, Lord, this is my frustration. This is my anger. Help me, even in the midst of this, to remember what's true. Or you could just say, you know what? Forget all that. I'm about to react. <laughs> Which is exactly what the devil wants you to do in life. I don't want you to go that route, but hey, we've all we've all fallen short of the glory. I I know I've I've been there, done that. Sometimes fall short. I'm I'm sure I fell short today, but I also know what the truth is, and I have to remember that. But I don't want you to get so frustrated that you lose sight of your vision, you lose sight of your dream, you lose sight of your goals. I don't want anger to consume you to the point where you give up on everything that you've worked for. It can be tough when you are trying to navigate this thing we call life. It could be frustrating when the things don't go the way that you thought that they would. It can be it could be damaging to your your ego and your soul when you're so close to something and it gets snatched away, right? And you're so angry and you're frustrated and you're yelling and you know, like me as a Christian, God, why would you do this? Why what what's happening? But maybe. Maybe on the other side of that, there's something way better than what you thought. And sure, you had to be frustrated to figure out that you actually care about it. Maybe you had to get angry to understand, like, you got to go even twice as hard. And it may not make sense in the moment, but when you step back and see it and realize, okay, maybe that's not where I was supposed to be. Maybe there is something greater. Maybe there is something that's more exciting. Maybe there is something bigger and better than I could ever imagine. But don't you let that anger and that frustration cloud your judgment. You can't you can't let that happen because then it it just it destroys everything that you've ever worked for. I don't want that to happen to you. I don't. I want you to be successful. And me, if it was up to me, we'd be happy 24/7. Life don't work that way. There's certain things that we go through that will allow us to humble ourselves to build ourselves to to reshape ourselves and reshape our our uh, character and then at the end of the day we progress we move we put one foot in front of the other we find a way to build ourselves and overcome these things we find a way to we find a way to just continue to to progress even even when it seems like everything else isn't going well. And you might be in that moment right now, right? Where it just seems like no matter where you're headed, there's a dark cloud and you, you've you been waiting for this breakthrough. Every day you wake up, you got hope. And every day that it doesn't happen, you become frustrated and frustrated and frustrated to the point where that that optimism and that happiness now fades and it turns into anger and disappointment. And you're so mad because it seems like everybody else is progressing and moving forward and you seem to be stuck or it looks like you're taking backward steps. 
one thing you have to remember though is that that person who gets that achievement and you feel like you should be in their position we don't know how long it took them we don't know how long they had to wait we don't know the battles they had to face we don't we don't know everybody's story and you have to be careful that you don't let jealousy and anger overtake you when you're on your road to going after what is meant for you if you can't celebrate others you're not gonna be able to celebrate yourself and i know that sounds crazy but it's real because how can you then get to your destination and help others get there if the whole time you were mad at everybody else going after what's meant for them i don't want i don't want your anger to destroy you i don't be frustrated got it understanding emotion got it feel what you feel got it but don't let that be the end don't let that be the destruction of who you are. I had a job that really challenged me and it frustrated me because every day I came home, I felt like I was failing. I felt like I wasn't going toward what it is that I wanted to work for. It damaged me emotionally. It damaged me spiritually. It damaged me mentally. It affected people around me, affected relationships. It affected how I talked to other people. I was just ready to give up. <laughs> But I also knew deep down inside of me, I, I I had this passion, this desire to help others. And I knew that even in the midst of, of what I was going through, although I was frustrated, I know God saw me. I know God was working with me. And what I didn't know was that season was building me up for a better season. And it got me to where I needed to be. And I love what I do and I love helping others. I love showing people where they can go and not necessarily control what they do but providing suggestions but still being able to support where they go i and i don't think that i would have been able to get to that point if that situation didn't show itself it's easy for me to look at it and say man i could have just jumped straight there and got it but i don't think i would have appreciated it as much if i didn't go through that building process it was a tough time i felt every emotion <laughs> And I was angry most days, but I think the fact that I didn't give up and I didn't give in allowed me to then truly appreciate my current position and how I progress. And I know that it's going to help me grow even more. All that to say this, don't let anger control your emotion. Don't let anger distract you or destroy you from going after what it is that you're meant to go after. But if you're going to be angry, use that energy to find the peace and the patience to keep your cool, to keep your head above water, and to keep going toward what it is that you've been called to do. So it's going to be an interesting task this week that I ask you to do. But the task is to control your anger, control how you feel. You're going to feel what you feel. You're going to experience what you experience because all of that is a part of your journey. And at the time, it's going to be one of those things that will probably be disappointing. But in the midst of that, you got to ask yourself, did God really bring me this far just to leave me here and keep me frustrated? Did he really put an X on my dreams? Did he really cancel out everything that I was going for? Or did he stop me? because he's redirecting me and he's making me better. And in this particular moment right now, am I using this for growth or am I just allowing the situation to fester? If I'm gonna stay in this permanent place of anger, then I'll never reach my full potential. So what do I do to better myself, to appreciate where I was stopped and allow myself to keep going and keep growing? Anger is not the end result, but allowing it to control you could be. Taking time to recognize your anger and recognize your emotion, all while staying patient and growing, just might be that missing piece that you need in order to overcome said obstacle in front of you and grow into where you're truly meant to be. So although you feel the emotion, don't let it control you. Recognize it for what it is, find the root, 
give it to God and go forward because you will reach your destination. This is just a temporary piece of time. And if you ever feel lost and if you ever feel like, man, I can't do it on my own and I just I'm looking around for encouragement. Always remember this. I believe in you. I go believe in yourself. All right. See how we think thoughts pod. I'm Ed. We out. These thoughts up in my head. Things I never did. I took some meals, but I'm still here. I got these thoughts up in my head. I toss and turn about some things I never said. I got regrets about some things I never did. I took some risks and took some L's, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And I know. And I know.